What's up guys? Welcome back to DCS World. Welcome back aboard the Hornet for another tutorial. In this one, we're going to take a look at laser guided bombs. Now we have two flavors of laser guided bombs available to us presently. Actually make that three flavors. We have the GBU-10, which is a 2,000 pound laser guided bomb. GBU-12, which scales back down to a 500 pound laser guided bomb. As you might guess, those are the 2,500 pound bombs, the Mark 84, Mark 82 respectively, equivalent. And we also have a GBU-16 available to us, which is a 1,000 pounder. Now, in order to use our laser guided bombs, we must first do the usual things such as get our master arm on, get ourselves into air to ground mode. And then as you can see on my SMS here, I have the 82LG, which is the 500 pound laser guided bomb, the GBU-12, denoted by 82LG. So we're gonna select that guy and we're going to do a couple of things. Mode, in this case, we're going to be using auto. So it's going to be a CCRP drop. M fuse, we're going to have off. E fuse is going to be instantaneous. And that's it for that. Now, these are laser guided bombs. As the name implies, we need to use a laser of some kind to actually guide them onto target. Best way we can do that ourselves is with our targeting pod. So we need to make sure that our FLIR switch here is in the on position. Mine already is. If yours isn't, it's going to take a few minutes to warm up. We also need to flip this switch here, LTD slash R, to the arm position. Now you can only do this with weight off wheels, i.e. you have to be airborne. Your master arm has to be on and you have to be in air to ground mode. Otherwise, this switch will not engage. It will spring load back to safe. So just bear that in mind. And with that all on and warmed up, let's go over to our right side DDI. Just halt my camera there. We're going to select FLIR to select our targeting pod as before. And we have a few things that we can configure here. First of all, we have code UFC. This is our laser code. It defaults to the number 1688, but let's say we wanted to change that. We could select UFC here. LTD stands for laser target designator code in this case. So if we selected that, we see 1688 is the default, but let's say I wanted to do 1585, just some arbitrary code. And now we see that our laser code for our targeting pod is now here set to 1585. All right. While we're over here, let's also select this option here labeled trig. That stands for trigger. If we box this, so we see trigger is boxed. We also see L arm denoted that the laser is armed. What this enables us to do is squeeze the gun trigger. And I actually need some target here. So let me slew down and find a target real quick. There's a nice target there. We're going to get him into a point track. And if I hit the trigger, Notice here that L arm has now changed to LTD slash R. LTD stands for laser target designator. The R stands for ranging. So if you see this indication here, LTD slash R, your laser is firing and it is a latched button. You don't need to hold the trigger. So a single squeeze of the trigger and release, the laser's firing. Squeeze it again, the laser is not firing. We're gonna come back to that in a little bit. Let's go back over to our SMS page over here. 
So we set our laser code to 1585 over on our targeting pod. We also need to program that laser code into our bombs here. The way we do that is with this button here labeled code. If we hit that, go over to our UFC, we see code here. Let's select code and then we need to plug in the same laser code. So it's 1585, enter. And now this station's bombs, there are two bombs on this station, are set to that laser code. However, you might also notice that the up the opposite station over here is still set to XXXX. We have to program the stations individually. So in order to do that, we're just going to simply hit the step button. So it's going to step over to this station here. We'll hit code again. We'll hit this again. One, five, eight, five, enter. And now both stations are set to the laser code of 1585. Why would you want to set stations to individual laser codes? You might have different laser codes. Uh, well, I mean, there could be situations where there are multiple laser designators out there. You might be using your own plus something on the ground, such as a JTAC or a Buddy Laze, another aircraft has a laser code and you might uh, want to drop on multiple targets. That's something you can do with multiple lasers firing in an area. But for our purposes, we'll keep things simple for now and just use our own laser code with our own laser designator from our targeting pod. All right, that should be everything we need to do. We're currently set up to drop one bomb in multiples of one. You could drop these in pairs if you wish, but these are precision weapons and a single bomb will do uh, enough damage to destroy just about anything on the ground outside of a building. All right, I've already got the target. I've got him in a point track, as you can see. You will generally want to use point tracks with laser targeting. Uh, reason for that is because the point track can track a moving target, and that then makes the laser-guided bombs useful against moving targets. So bear that in mind. You can use area track if you wish, but I find point track is much more versatile. All right, so with that said, I'm gonna get unpaused and fly towards our target here. I actually need to designate him with TDC Depress as we normally do. So now I actually have CCRP symbology on the HUD as we've explored before. The target is 17 miles that way over the palm. Let's fly towards him, come out of active pause here and fly this way a little bit. I'm actually going to engage my barometric altitude hold to make things nice and easy. As for altitude, you want to be above 20,000 feet thereabouts. Um, Matt Wagner himself has recommended for the Hornet that you be between 20 and 25,000 and going somewhere between 300 and 350 knots. I'm currently doing 330 or thereabouts, so that's pretty good. As with all of our CCRP drops, we're going to get ourselves lined up with the bomb fall line and fly towards it. All right, quick pause while we have about eight seconds to release. Just a couple of things I want to talk about with the laser guided bombs. We're going to do a normal CCRP drop, as I mentioned before. We're going to get the drop symbology. So as with any CCRP drop, press and hold until the weapon comes off of the rail. However, we're going to get a time to impact indication on the HUD. We don't want to fire our laser until 15 seconds TTI. And you're going to notice the TTI come up on the HUD, as I mentioned. This is very important as because the way the bomb is going to fall, if we try to laze it too early, the bomb might pick it up, it might not. But if it tries to pick it up, it's going to wobble around and try to track itself onto the target. And because of the way laser guided bombs guidance is set up, they have really big fins and they work in what's called bang bang configuration, meaning the steering fins on the bomb aren't able to go anywhere in between their no deflection or maximum deflection uh, sort of setups. So it's either all or nothing. And that means the bombs are going to wobble quite a bit in flight. And if we try to laze them too quickly, that could cause them to lose too much energy 
and they may fall short of the target. So very, very important that we do not actually engage the laser until 15 seconds TTI. So something to bear in mind. Now let's unpause and see what we can do here. Holding weapon release. There's the bomb fall indication. And one away. 38 seconds TTI. As you can see it right there, at 15 seconds, I'm going to press the trigger, and that's going to fire the laser. And I'm just flying straight and level for now. You could enter a shallow orbit here if you wish. All right, 16 and 15 seconds, laser on. And if I did everything right, that target there should explode. Boom. All right. Pretty easy, pretty effective, very precise weapon and very fun to use. Let's, uh, let's line up another drop, and I want to do one where we take a look at the bomb actually falling, so you can see what I mean when it wobbles a lot. So stand by while I get another target set up. All right, I'm lined up with another target here. So same as before. Make sure our codes are set right. We'll get ourselves lined up with that bomb fall line and just wait for the weapon release cue. Holding weapon release. Here comes the cue, and drop. Waiting until 15 seconds TTI, and as soon as we hit that, we're going to go F6 and watch the bomb fall. And 16, close enough. All right, the bomb is now tracking. You can see it wobbling. But it should be pretty well on target there. There's those targets. Kaboom. All right, so that's a real basic look at using laser guided bombs. They're pretty easy to do. Uh, that was an example using our own targeting pod to laze, but you could set up a scenario where a JTAC would laze for you, or a, another aircraft could buddy laze for you. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I will see you for the next video. Take care.